when you focus on the breath. Also pay attention to the perception you have of the breath, the image you have in mind. Think of the body being filled with breath channels and that they all connect so that when you breathe in, every part of the body gets nourished by good breath energy. And if one part of the body has an excess and another part of, part of the body has a lack, think of things balancing out. So there's a quality of evenness to the breath energy throughout the body. Everything is breathing together. Things are not working at cross purposes. Start with deep, satisfying breathing, and then as the body gets nourished by the breath, then you can allow the breath to get more gentle. Ultimately, you actually want it to stop, but you're not going to try to force it to stop. If you force it to stop, you create lots of problems. But simply thinking of everything being all connected. allows the breath energy to find its level where the mind is still, the brain isn't using all that much oxygen, and you just don't feel the need to breathe. To do this requires that you listen very carefully to the breath, and you're very wary about any movements in the mind that would interfere. Because this quality of listening and being sensitive, that's what you're after. Think of it listening for a far and distant sound. You have to get very quiet to hear the sound. You want to make sure you're not making any noise. So for the mind to see the refinements of the breath, the mind has to get very refined as well. So think of your awareness being refined right here. Then when there's less interference from the mind, you'll find there's less interference from the breath. Things grow very, very still. And you can see things very clearly. The slightest movement that comes up in the mind is very apparent, because you're not sloshing around. And when the mind is still like this, you can hear the Dharma. In other words, you notice what's going on, cause and effect, in the mind and also outside in the world around you. One of Ajahn Fuang's favorite sayings from Ajahn Mun was that answer he gave to the scholarly monk from Bangkok. The monk asked him, Here I am living in Bangkok with all these educated monks around, all the best Dharma talk givers in Thailand, and even then I have some problems that no one can answer. But you're out here in the forest all alone. There was a little edge to the question. You're out here in the forest all, all alone. Where do you get to hear the Dharma? And then John Mun said, I hear the Dharma 24 hours a day, except when I'm asleep. The slightest thing happens. And you can see it as a lesson in Dharma. The Dharma is all around. After all, the Buddha didn't make up the Dharma, he discovered it. This is how he discovered it, by getting his mind really quiet and observant. The trick is learning how to tune in so you can hear it. We're like those satellites that are trying to detect infrared radiation, and the, the infrared detector has to be shielded from the satellite itself, because of course the satellite has warmth. It's sending out infrared rays. And this is our problem. The Dharma is being broadcast day and night, day and night. The reason we don't notice it or hear it is because we're broadcasting our own stuff, our own greed, aversion, delusion, our own desires, our own craving. We broadcast out looking for 
satisfaction for our wants, satisfaction for the needs we have. And it's just I, 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 like that little article back by the traffic cone in the onion. I, I, I'm important. I, I, I want this. I, I, I need this. And so that's all you hear, is what you've been broadcasting. So one of the reasons we got the mind into concentration is so it can settle down, get a shield from those, those rays and tune in to the channel of the Dharma. Seeing cause and effect, where there's suffering, where there's stress, what's causing it, what can be done to put an end to it. When you look for that, you see it's being broadcast all over. We talk about how easy it is to see it in the forest and in a quiet place like this. My first year back from Thailand, in fact, it was the first month I was back from Thailand. And John Sawa so was, a number, of the, a number of the other monks were taken on a trip up to Yellowstone. I stayed here. And when they came back, I asked him what he'd seen, what had impressed him there. He said, inconstancy. His mind was tuned in to that message. His mind was tuned into the Dharma being broadcast. And the crickets here, the trees, the animals, a lot of the calls of the animals remind you, I think, that those animals are suffering. And they don't know anything about Four Noble Truths, and they don't know anything about the past and the end of suffering, so they're just stuck there for the time being. And then you ask yourself, well, here I am. I've got the, the opportunity to learn these truths and to benefit from them. Am I benefiting as much as I can? Or am I in the same state as the crows and the, the coyotes? But it's not just in nature that you can see these lessons. You go into a city and look at the people around you. There's just a lot of suffering in people's faces. And a lot of it's self-driven. So if you learn how to tune in to the proper channel, tune into the proper frequency, there's drama all around, and you can benefit from it. The important thing, of course, is that transmitter that you've got, transmitting different channels, and then, of course, listening to other people's channels. Getting the mind concentrated, getting it really still, helps to tune in on the proper frequency. So when different ideas of happiness come up, you can say, is this really true? Or is there an element of self-delusion in here? When in the proper frequency, the other frequencies are jarring. If you move your mind into those other frequencies, and all of a sudden they, they scramble the message of the Dharma. So you have to be very careful where you're tuned into. If you're properly tuned, the Dharma gets very clear. What's right, what's wrong, what's skillful, what's not skillful where our true happiness lies, where long-term suffering lies. If you're properly tuned, it's crystal clear. So try to tune your mind into the breath energy right now. Tune your mind into this channel where all the breath channels in the body are connected and everything's nourishing everything else in the body. Listen carefully to the the breath needs of the body. And you find that it helps get the mind tuned into the proper channel. Just make sure the other channels don't scramble the signal. <laughs>